Hey everyone, this is John, and I'm going to show you three really helpful functions that your TI Inspire CX or CX2 calculator can perform for your Algebra 1 Regents or Final Exam. If you know how to use your calculator properly, it can do all the math for you, and I would say you can easily get a 70-80% to in this exam using only your calculator. First, we're going to go over the calculator function. You can hit 1 to open a new document until you look like, get to a page that looks something like this. So I opened a calculator page by hitting 1, I went for Control, Doc, and one, and this is what I'm going to have set up for this lesson. So the first thing that we're going to look at is nSolve. You can access that by going to Menu, Algebra, and clicking Numerical Solve. You'll get a screen that looks something like this. Essentially, you're going to enter in any function. As I said up here, we have 4x plus 5 equals 6. All right, any function can go into nSolve. So enter in your function to nSolve, put a comma, and then put the variable that you're solving for. In this case, we have x. It will then spit out what your answer is after you hit enter, which is 0.25 in this case. Now let's take a look at the next function in the list, which is linsolve. Again, we're going to 3 and then 2. It's going to ask you how many equations you want, and then ask you what variables you want. You're going to hit OK, and it's going to give you something like this. You're going to put your first equation in the top and your second equation in the bottom. If you have more than one, it'll display a third box, and then a fourth box, and so on. I just put in two simple equations here. Again, they must be linear, and then it spit out this answer for me. Polyroots is the third equation that we're going to go over, the third function that we're going to go over, and it's 3, 3, and you always hit 1. Never use 2 or 3 there. Now, in Algebra 1, you're probably not going to see anything beyond a quadratic, which has a degree of 2. A linear function has a degree of 1, and a constant has a degree of 0. If you have real roots, the way that you decide if you have a real or complex root is very simple. Firstly, graph your function. If the function crosses the x-axis the same number of times as the degree, choose real. If not, choose complex. Or if it has a bounce, that counts as 2. So you're going to select that. In my case, we'll go real and hit OK. Now you're simply just going to put in the different coefficients to each of your function values. If it's not in order, let's say you've got a function that's like 5x plus 3x squared. Pretty simple. Just rearrange it so that it's in order of degree. So 2, and then 1, and then x to the 0, which is of course 1. So it's just a0 times 1, which is a0. Now this is the function that I put in there, which is 6x squared plus 3x minus 5. Then I put my comma again in x. All right. And this is the function I got. So this would be the roots of the function here. Let's move on to graphing. So I graphed two functions here. The first one I graphed was 6 times x squared plus 7x minus 8. And the way you can do that is simply by double clicking and then entering in your function. It'll show up something like this. I can also alter the window. If I go to Window Zoom, I can either zoom in, or I can zoom out using the same idea. Now we can also go to Window Settings and set our own thing. Notice that if we zoom in or out, it gives us these weird numbers. And let's say I just want to go from 0, negative 4 to 8. I want my Y value to go from negative 10 to 20. I can also change the scale. Let's say I think that this Y value of 30 is going to be a little bit big for my Y scale of 1. And I'm going to change it to a more reasonable scale. Look at that. Each one of these hash marks is going to be equal to one of my scale. So for example, each of these is equal to five and each of these is equal to one. Now, you notice I still have this plus thing. To get rid of that, I can just escape and now I can click without having to zoom in. What I can also do is move around these texts if I find them hard to read. Now, if I don't like these grid marks or if I want to add grid marks if your calculator doesn't have them, simply go to view, grid, and then change. Let's say I want no grid. The grid disappears. Now if I want to analyze my graph, I can go to Menu, Analyze Graph, and then use the instructions given after you click on any of these. An intersection will require two graphs or more, and then you have zero, minimum, and maximum. Some graphs do not have a minimum or do not have a maximum. For instance, this graph here does not have a maximum because it always goes to infinity. Let's keep moving. We made a list here, all right, and we had velocity versus time. Now note that this is different from a table. If you wanted to create a table of a function, what well, you go here is you go here, hit Control T, and then hit Control 6 to put it in a new tab. Now if I go over here to 1.4, I have my own little table, and I can change the step by going to Menu, Table, and Edit Table Settings. You can change where the table starts, and you can change where the table steps. The step is essentially how many x values it skips before it goes to a new one. If I change this to 0 0.5, then the values 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5 would show up on my table. Let's keep moving by looking at this list. I got to this list by clicking Control, Doc, and Add List in Spreadsheet. I'm going to go back to my list now.
I put in some random numbers, but on the exam, you'll likely have a set of numbers that the Algebra 1 exam will give you. One of the most important things you need to know for your Algebra 1 exam is learning how to calculate regression. To do that, we're going to hit Menu, Control Doc, and then Add Data and Statistics. On the X axis, you're going to put your dependent variable. On the Y axis, you're going to put your independent variable. And you see we get this graph that's just not quite linear, but it looks pretty much like a line, so I'm going to go with linear regression. To get to regression, hit Menu, Analyze, Regression, and then the type of graph that you want. I'm going to go linear because it looks like a line. Now this is a little bit of a funky graph, and oftentimes they'll ask you to round or truncate these values. Now one final thing we can do is statistics. Let's say we have that value t, and we want to find the average value of t. We're going to go statistics, stat calculations, and one variable statistics. Now we have one list, and we're trying to find t. So t is from that list that we made in the other page, and that's how you're going to find this. So essentially, if you're given a list of um, numbers and you want to find the, you know, the mode, the median, the range, etc., what you're going to do is you're going to have to go into that list function and make a whole list. Then you're going to have to open up a calculator page and take a look at this. It'll give you some useful statistics like your minimum, your first quartile, or median, and your third quartile. So this is pretty much all you really need to know for your Algebra 1 exam. Of course, make sure that you know how to use the basic functions and make sure you know your PEMDAS and order of operations. But that's about it. Thanks for watching and good luck on your final.